Oh, gosh. Oh. <sighs> it's just a message from one of my viewers. Let's see what conveniently relevant thing he has to say. From Mirage in CSGO to Summoner's Rift in League of Legends, a Serenite Curtain has descended across the PvP landscape. Call of Duty, Dota, World of Warcraft, Halo, Overwatch, all these popular games and multitude more, and their player bases lie in what I must call the sexist sphere, and all are subject in one form or another to the parasitic thoughts of prejudice based on gender. Though sexism's stronghold is firm, I repulse the idea that a gamer civil war is inevitable. It is because I am sure we still hold the power to save the future that I feel the duty to speak out now that I have the occasion and the opportunity to do so. If all your gamer morale and virtuous forces and strength are joined with my own in cool cooperation, the high roads of the future will be clear, not only for us, but for all, not only for our time, but for centuries to come. Okay. Calm down there, Winston. But I do see your point. If you use social media, you'll eventually see someone, usually a woman, complaining about harassment based on gender in video game voice chat. You may have even seen, perpetrated, or experienced it in-game yourself. Online it is a spicy topic with striking and strikingly prevalent examples. But seriously though, this stuff gets uh, pretty nasty. Yeah, ra I'm gonna rape you. Yeah! No, we want to kick you because you're being a royal asshole. That's why we're What are you talking about, you, you fat slut? Play with you. We get it. You play video games and try to get laid. Spontaneous. I'm single. You trying to give me those digits? Send news. How do we lost, you fucking cunt? You kill yourself. Two fat bitches with nothing to do on a Friday. Good shit. You got carried. Fucking dyke ass. Thanks, daddy. Your voice is so sexy. a very deep voice. I'm gonna rape Rose. What happened? I'm a rape. I'm a rape. Get back to Oh my god, girl. Can you use your freaking ult? Yeah, it's not, girl. This is not Victoria's Secret. Stop saving your coupons. Little <laughs> bitch. Shoo. That we are what we eat. No, I can beat you by morning. Ew. If you're spontaneous, get holy in her number, we would've won. To be honest, I got a little hard thinking about you during this game. Crazy. I think fun of gamer men. Because gamer women are like so ugly usually. Would you be okay with like an e-date? Going on an e-date with me? You could like video chat. I could order you some Uber Eats. I don't like broke dudes. Sorry. I'm, I just offered to order you Uber Eats, you dumb bitch. I'm good. Unfortunate. Yeah, I think Mercy's not working out for you, dumb cunt. Learn how to fucking play a proper character. 45 hours and you still suck. I guess girls just suck at video games in general, you fucking stupid whore. Hi. Suck man. Hey. Oh, oh my suck god. Suck my clitoris. <laughs> It would seem based on what you hear, a deluge of sexist harassment awaits any woman about to speak up in voice chat in almost any game out there. But what do I mean by sexist harassment? Because it's surprisingly hard to define. For this video, I define it as unwanted verbal engagement by a perpetrator that arises primarily based on the perceived gender of the victim. This definition is crafted specifically for this video's needs and is not intended to be applicable in all circumstances. But is sexist harassment actually a big deal, assuming it exists? Well, it somewhat depends on severity. There are two spectra of harassment to think about which form a harassment compass. You have positive to negative harassment and mild to obscene harassment. I've put some examples up and it's definitely subjective where they belong, but I think this is pretty fair. From this, it should be clear quadrant four is least worrisome. And from what I've seen, it's also most common. If all harassment was like this, it would still be great if it stopped, but I probably wouldn't have made this video. Quadrant 2 is the big leagues. Unfortunately, it's impossible to categorize comments into these quadrants objectively, especially for edge cases, so most of the time categories are simplified to just positive and negative. Still not perfectly objective, but it's a lot closer. With severity explained, let's move on to five arguments to not tackle the supposed sexist harassment issue. 1. Voice chat is, and always has been, a harsh place, so expecting to feel welcomed automatically due to one's gender is ridiculous, and in fact itself sexist. 2. Men and women both experience harassment, i.e. trash talk, in roughly equal proportions, so there is no injustice. Three. It infantilizes a group to suggest they are unable to fend for themselves in voice chat and must have outside individuals and groups call for broad societal changes to benefit them. 4. Sexist harassment is the majority of the time benign, and the extreme kind will always exist regardless of societal pressure. Sometimes life is unfair, and people just have to deal with it and move on. 
5. The option to mute an obnoxious individual or not participate in voice chat is always available and is a much simpler solution. Now here are five arguments to tackle the sexist harassment issue. 1. Men and women as a whole are equally capable of success in games, so an unequal prejudice against one is illogical. Treating individuals based on true or untrue stereotypes of the aggregate group from which they identify is wrong and unacceptable. 2. Harassment based on inalienable characteristics of an individual is particularly upsetting and unfair compared to harassment based on transient conditions like skill or falsehoods like who has or has not had relations with your mother. 3. An appeal to the status quo of gendered harassment is almost always made by individuals who experience little to none of said harassment and is therefore an argument made from ignorance. 4. Minimizing sexist harassment in voice chat corresponds to reduced barriers to entry into gaming for all, which will have trickle-down effects, resulting in more accurate representation at all levels in the gaming space. 5. Voice chat should be an environment equally welcoming to all, regardless of inalienable identity. Though sexist harassment cannot be fully eliminated, making it less common and less socially acceptable is achievable without authoritarian measures. I don't know which side of the aisle you adhere to, but regardless, I don't claim to have the answers to reduce sexism in voice chat. That is not what this video is about. This video is also not about why people are sexist. Assuming you subscribe to the notion something should be done, what's a good first step? I personally think quantification of the issue is good. It shows people the extent of the problem, both demonstrating its existence and the potential difficulty of near or total eradication. There is certainly anecdotal evidence women are targeted, but just how much really? I have played countless hours of online multiplayer, and have seen maybe at most a handful of times a woman was treated unfairly due to her perceived gender. But my perceptions are not necessarily accurate, which is why science is so gosh darn useful. So how often do players encounter sexist harassment? There are studies in the literature that try to answer this exact thing. I ended up not being wholly satisfied with the research already done, so I ended up doing a study myself, but it's worth going over what others have already done. There are two types of studies to measure the prevalence of sexist harassment in voice chat, surveys and field studies. Surveys are much more common because it's less time consuming to gather large volumes of data, data analysis is simpler, and there is greater precedence from other fields. But surveys are also very flawed because the humans filling them out have imperfect and biased memory. There can be selection bias, as only people interested in the survey will take it. And questions and answer options are subjectively interpreted by each respondent. I'll go over a handful of key surveys conducted in the past 10 years. First is a 2014 Pew Research survey of 2,839 internet users asking if they have personally experienced certain forms of online harassment. The numbers are percents, and you can see men and women in the 18 to 24 age range experience harassment differently, particularly with stalking and sexual harassment. For gaming particularly, 44% think the space is more welcoming to men, 3% for more welcoming to women, and 51% for equally welcoming. The remaining two suffered heart attacks right before answering the question. But that's not specifically for game voice chat, so let's get more specific. In 2019, Carrie et al. conducted a survey of 384 participants, all being students from the University of Virginia and Toronto. 150 males and 230 females were included, with 75% of male respondents indicating they play video games compared to 50% for females. Males on average played 5.65 hours per day, while females played 3.67. Males recorded participating in online voice chat 20 to 30% of the time, while females used it 10 to 20%. So those are the demographics, which are very important to keep in mind when going over the results. Numerical data are from the 7-point Likert scale, with 1 being never and 7 being very often. When asked how often they make comments in chat based on another player's gender, respondents scored on average 1.53, so between never and rarely. But when asked about the average gamer's frequency of making gendered comments, they said 3.69. So either the average gamer is much less likely to make gendered comments than the average gamer, or this survey has a big selection problem. Or, and hear me out, people are bad at self-reporting, making surveys unreliable. 
Unfortunately, the study does not compare men versus women in how much sexual harassment they experience, so we must look elsewhere. Brim, 2013, conducted a survey of World of Warcraft players. Posting the survey to the WoW forums, 166 males, 199 females, and 7 others responded. It was found 11.6% of males and 63.6% of females reported experiencing sexism. 56.5% of males said they had seen another player experience sexism, while females were at 75.2%. These last two percentages should logically be about the same, and the difference cannot be fully explained by females playing more with other females, so why are the numbers so different? Perhaps women are more sensitive to this issue, so they either notice more instances of sexism, or have a lower tolerance of what constitutes sexism. They may also feel a personal connection for the other player, if she is a woman, as the sexist remarks are likely degrading to all women, and therefore they are more memorable. For males, 27.5% view sexism as a problem in the game, whereas 45.3% of females do. Unfortunately, no close-ended questions asked about the frequency or intensity of sexist comments, nor about the general harassment to see if men and women experience that differently, too. Ballard and Welch, 2017, also conducted a survey for MMOs. Well, they say that, and then say Call of Duty is an MMO, so whoopsies. The survey was sent through university emails, Facebook, and Reddit. They didn't get the greatest number of respondents, just 110 males, 36 females, and 5 others, but the data collected is quite pertinent. The numbers given are from a Likert scale with 1 being never in the past 2 to 3 months, and 5 being several times a week. Comparing the sampled bullying behaviors, only 4 differences between males and females were statistically significant. Sexual harassment, sexual pursuit, group exclusion, and getting kicked. But enough with the surveys. Well, at least in this video. I recommend checking them out yourself and reading the papers in their entirety, because I really just took out certain snippets. There's plenty more juicy information to be mined on your own. As I said, surveys can be very flawed. Field studies, on the other hand, work completely differently. In this context, they involve entering a game's voice chat, and recording interactions with players directly. Benefits include more consistent categorization of exchanges, since all analysis is done by a single group, where in surveys, some people may take no offense to certain remarks and answer questions accordingly, while others are more easily offended. With field studies, all remarks are filtered the same way, so there is greater consistency. Field studies have much stronger control of variables, the only variable not able to be controlled is the other players. And of course, with direct access to exchanges, there is no worry of faulty memory. There are downsides though, and there's a reason field studies are much rarer. It's a greater time commitment to gather all data by a single party, because many games must be played to be statistically viable. Categorization of exchanges is still subjective. Controlling for as many variables as possible makes the environment less realistic than actual voice chat. There is a greater chance for systemic bias, as all games are played by a single party. For example, An individual may have a particularly annoying voice. And demographics of participants are usually impossible to gather. With surveys, I could have gone on all day with more and more published papers. But for field studies, I could only find two relevant articles. Ivory et al. 2014 investigated the effects of gender on friend request acceptance rates. This isn't exactly sexist harassment, but significant aggregate differences would be examples of sexism by definition. They conducted the study with a PS3 playing Modern Warfare 3, in total playing 238 matches of free-for-all. That's right, imagine getting a publishing credit for crushing noobs with your MP7. So how it worked was there was a male and female condition differentiated by player tag and voice. Before each match, the sex was randomly chosen along with the attitude of the player, positive, negative, or silent. If the map downturn was selected, the controller was thrown into the TV. During the game, if silent was not chosen, voice recordings pre-recorded to a computer were broadcast every 90 seconds. For positive, these included, nice shot, while for negative, examples were, you suck, and, hey guys, ready to lose? Both male and female recordings were done with white Americans with standard accents. At the end of the match, friend requests were sent out to all players. In total, 1,371 players were interacted with. 848, or 62%, ignored the friend request for too long and were removed from the study, 
leaving 520 unknowing participants. Females had their friend requests accepted more often than males in all circumstances. This is expected due to the thirstiness of the average gamer. Interestingly, for the females, negative utterances in voice chat hurt the acceptance rate, while for males, it greatly helped. This is also expected due to the submissiveness of the average gamer to chads who are willing to yell insults in-game. So, it's clear a man and a woman with all variables controlled for, or smoothed out by sample size, are treated differently when it comes to friend requests. But what about harassment, you ask? That is an absolutely wonderfully convenient question, as the only other field study I could find tackles that topic. But seriously, why were these the only two studies I could find? I looked everywhere. I don't think any others exist. Though I did find a study that used gendered text chat in World of Warcraft, along with avatar attractiveness to see differences in compliance to a simple favor across 1,220 interactions. The only significant difference was between male and female users in the ugly avatar category. Sorry, orcs. But again, why haven't more field studies been done? That's a big reason why I did one myself. And it wasn't like it was difficult, just time consuming. But I'm getting ahead of myself. I actually designed my own experiment before reading this paper, but my methods ended up matching very closely with Kuznikov and Rose's by happenstance. They played 245 matches of Halo 3 Team Slayer, and this was in 2012, so you know those games were sweaty. As the point of the experiment was to see differences in how players reacted to the male condition versus the female condition, a male and a female had pre-recorded voice lines played through an iPod into the game's chat. The authors don't say how often these lines were broadcasted, but they were at least played both in the pre- and post-game lobbies, and the actual match. These phrases were harmless things, like, Hi everybody! I like this map. That was a great kill you just had. I think I saw a couple of them headed this way. That was a good game, everyone. Thanks for the game. Bye. Personally, if I heard someone talking like this, I would assume they had some form of brain damage. But if these lines were played equally for both male and female, that doesn't matter. All comments directed to the player were then categorized into directed positive, directed negative, and questions, which is a somewhat subjective process. They played 82 games in the control condition with no voice recordings, 82 with female recordings, and 81 with the male, and in total interacted with 1,711 other players. 44% of the control games had no voice chatter at all, but for the male and female conditions that number was only 23 and 21% respectively. Because of the nature of the game, not getting any responses could be due to a few things. No players having a mic, no players in game chat, or actually being ignored. There's no way to tell. Their analysis was only done for the games in which other players communicated. For the control, there were on average 0.94 positive and 0.61 negative comments per match. To me, this seems really high. When factoring in all games played, even those without communication, that's 0.41 positive and 0.27 negative comments per match. I've played plenty of Halo 3 and Reach matches beginning in 2011, and I can't remember a single time someone said anything directed at me if I hadn't already said something in voice chat first, or team killed them. Maybe I got lucky through all those years? Maybe these researchers just got talkative lobbies? I don't know. Anyway, keep the control talkativeness in mind. For the male condition, again only considering matches with other players in voice chat, there were on average 4.23 positive and 1.24 negative comments per match. The female condition received 3.03 positive and 2.82 negative comments. So it seems the male received 1.4 times as many positive comments, and the female received 2.3 times as many negative comments. Now, for some reason the paper goes on to say multiple times the female received 3 times as many negative comments, but 2.274 does not round up to 3 under our current laws of mathematics, so I have no idea how they arrived at that number. I don't want to say they did that on purpose to inflate the number, but I can't see any other reason where I'm standing. Anyway, they found male voices are treated better in voice chat in Halo 3. But this is just one study for one game in 2012, nine years ago. And this study was quite influential, referenced in over a hundred other papers, and in mainstream outlets. How come I can't find a single other example of someone doing a similar study? The heck, dude. So, I did it myself. Well, actually, I came up with the idea independently, and I'm only spinning this narrative to be more compelling. First, I needed to choose a game, a game I was familiar with and could tolerate playing for hours and hours. 
I ended up choosing Overwatch, specifically Quick Play. Now this game has some pros and cons for this experiment. Pros are you can see the number of players on your team that are also in voice chat. There is also text chat for those who don't have mics or aren't comfortable speaking. Quick Play is also a casual experience, so I won't be making anyone mad by using my mic, but not actually doing any useful callouts. But Quick Play is less casual than something like Call of Duty, so people are more likely to have mics. There are also endorsements at the end of the match, making for another data point to consider. The downsides to Overwatch here are there are no pre- and post-game lobbies, and I have found players are much less talkative in Quick Play than in Competitive, which is expected, but too bad. Overwatch is somewhat unique in that it's a fairly competitive FPS game with a sizable female player base. It's been estimated 16% or 1 in 6 Overwatch players are female, compared to the FPS average of 7%. Considering this along with the casual nature of quick play, this choice of game is one of the most favorable possible to have an equal balance of harassment between males and females. If this experiment was done with Counter-Strike, Rainbow Six, Call of Duty, etc., there would likely be a different outcome. But with that in mind, I'll give you a brief rundown of the experiment and then the results. I had a male and female record voice lines on my phone, and they were played back in voice chat at strategic times. The audio quality ended up being pretty trash, which I think actually was a good thing, because it got more people to comment on just how terrible it was. In each game, at the start was one of two greetings. Hello everyone. Hello everyone. Let's win this thing. Let's win this thing. Then at some point when an objective was taken or the round ended, another recording was played. Nice try. Nice try. Nice job. Nice job. And then right when the game ended was one of two parting messages. Best of luck to you all. Best of luck to you all. Good game, everyone. Good game, everyone. 100 games were played for the control, so no voice, and then 100 games for the male and then the female conditions. Because the number of players in voice chat is known, this value is made constant afterwards to be more fair by playing a few more games in the control and male conditions to match the female number of 305 players in chat. So in total, at least 915 players were in voice chat, and at least 1,550 were played with. I say at least, because there's bound to be some that leave mid-match and get replaced. I tried playing my best for each game to keep things consistent skill-wise, and I don't think my skill played much of a role in this experiment. Comments were categorized into neutral, positive, and negative, with a bonus category of gendered. Any comment from the three previous categories that also referenced my gender was lumped into the gendered category too. For the control, out of 105 games, only 6 had any directed comments towards me. So just considering games with any chat, there were on average 0.67 neutral, 0.17 negative, and 0.17 positive. Factoring all games played though, these numbers dropped down substantially. I also received on average 0.57 endorsements across the 105 games. Now for the male condition, out of the 105 games, 51 had other players communicate back. From those games, there was on average 0.96 neutral comments per match. Half of these were in various ways commenting on the quality of my mic. A few people suspected I wasn't using my real voice, which was true, so fair enough. I received on average 0.69 positive comments from those matches, and they were typically just saying hello or hi back to me. Then there were 0 .10 negative comments on average. Nice job. Why are you being weird? Best of luck to you all. Dude, shut the fuck up. I can't talk to you. Alright, fine, fuck you. For the gendered section, it was tough to definitively categorize certain comments because many potentially gendered words like dude, guy, and bro are often used casually without actual gendered intent. So, however you categorize these, there was one use of brother, the full word, which is definitely gendered, and a couple dudes as well. I also got 0.8 endorsements per game. My general experience masquerading as a male was not dissimilar to my lifelong experience playing as a male, but it was fun the way people reacted to my crappy audio quality. Moving on to the female condition, out of 100 games, 57 had another player respond. Out of those, there was an average of 1.0 neutral comments per match. A lot of these were doubting whether I was female or not, and of course some commented on the terrible microphone quality. For positive comments, the female voice got 0.89 per match. Again, these were mostly hellos, but I also got a few more compliments on my gameplay than with the male. 
I also received one unprompted friend request, which did not happen for the mail, but just one doesn't mean much. I then received 0 .09 negative comments per match. Best of luck to you all. Damn, bitch, you sound like you're from McDonald's with that mic. Hello, everyone. Shut up. Nice job. Uh, and it's at the end of the game, you're just gonna be like, go to my OnlyFans page, subscribe now. There were definitely more gendered comments, but a lot of these were players acting like I was actually a male, just pretending to be a female with a soundboard. Props to them, I guess, but I worry their soundboard radars may have some false positives with actual women. There were about 0.11 gendered comments per match, excluding the ones thinking I was male. Let's win this thing. Oh my goodness, it's a girl. Oh. Nice job. Is that a soundboard? That's what a female sounds like. Or a little bit. <laughs> your lead, Ryan. Bro, are you talking just because you heard a gamer girl? I also got on average 0.69 endorsements across the 100 matches. So for playing female, I definitely noticed my gender was brought up more as a point of contention compared to the male. This is likely because male is generally considered the default in FPS games, like being right-handed is the default for just about everything. But it really wasn't as bad as I expected. Of course, these were under near ideal circumstances to achieve the least sexist harassment possible, so it's likely women out there in the real world experience more sexist harassment, especially if they talk more in chat, or play even more male majority games. I also received more replies back as a female, which again could be related to the relative novelty of hearing a female in chat. It tends to stick out more and grabs people's attention. With all the information I've shared in this video, let's answer the clickbaity question in the title, Are Gamers Sexist? By that I of course mean the average gamer, not literally every single one, and just focusing on the more hardcore genres. It would seem no is the answer. If voice chat behavior is used as the barometer, the average gamer is quite silent, actually. Of those who choose to speak, though, it would seem gamers do tend to react differently to the male versus the female voice. It varies by the study, but they respond more often to the female, and then more often bring up gender. Depending on the study, men tend to receive other types of negative attention more often than women. Would I say this makes these gamers sexist? Yes, a bit, but that's not necessarily completely individual gamers' faults. It's more a consequence of females being much less common, so their gender becomes a curiosity of sorts. And the reason females are less common in these genres is a complicated issue whose blame most definitely does not fall squarely on these average Joe gamers. They may not necessarily be helping the situation, though. I should be clear that the more vile and toxic reactions to women in chat are not representative of the average gamer. They are just too few and far between. Footnote. Foot foot footnote. 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 I use male slash man and female slash woman a bit interchangeably in this video and don't really touch on people who don't fall neatly into those categories. I'm not discounting these people, it's just that they're a small minority that are hard to account for. This video is not intended to capture their experiences in game chat, as they are likely quite different from most people's if their voice does not clearly identify them as falling into one of those two categories. Also, for controlling variables, it was easiest to do that by using stereotypically straight, white, American-sounding voices. Race slash ethnicity and sexual orientation's impact on treatment in voice chat could be a whole separate video. I expect this video will get more dislikes than usual. That's inevitable with these kinds of videos, so oh well. If you genuinely think I messed something up, please let me know in the comments. And if you're curious about my own study, particularly about how I controlled for win rates and time of day, I have that info too. If you made it this far, you're likely a fan of my content, and you may be interested in a little special game I've made. This video, the previous G Fuel video, and my next video, maybe even beyond that, I don't know, they all contain a secret puzzle hidden somewhere. The first person to complete each puzzle gets a nice prize too, so good luck. Oh, and if anyone solves the puzzle, I will put a disclaimer at the very bottom of the description so you don't get your hopes up about the prize. No disclaimer means the prize is still up for grabs. That goes for all videos containing a puzzle. Thanks for watching.